these are like your word problems from the linear section. The fun part is coming up with the equations. The less fun part is actually completing the square to answer the question. Okay? It's less fun because it gets boring after a while, but it is kind of fun. I enjoy it, completing the square. Okay? So here's the issue we have. We got two numbers. Their difference is six, and their product is a minimum. If you see the word minimum or maximum, you're completing the square. Okay? Because it's asking a question about the vertex. And so in order to answer the question about the vertex, the minimum or maximum, you better write it into vertex form, which requires you to complete the square. Okay? So we first need to come up with an equation that we can complete the square on. That's our first step. Does everybody know what's going on? Okay. So here's what we got. Let's say let M represent the larger number. And we'll say let N represent the smaller number. Okay, we know from the question m minus n is equal to 6. Okay. Any problems so far? It's not too crazy yet. Okay. We also know that their product is a minimum. And okay, when I multiply the two numbers together, they're going to give me a minimum. So uh, I'm going to write over here, OK? I'm going to probably, here, I'll move this equation over here to save some space. <clears throat> OK? Uh, so the product is a minimum. So the product is when I multiply the two numbers together. Okay? We don't necessarily know what to do from this point because this is not, we got two, like if I expanded that I get MN and like I don't know what happens, right? But this is where you rely on the first part of the question that says two numbers have a difference of six. You wrote me an equation, so why can't you say m equals 6 plus n? Mm, kind of, yeah. Just for one little step here. All right? m is equal to 6 plus n. Well, if m is equal to 6 plus n, then I better be allowed to plug it in there. And now the product becomes 6 plus n multiplied by n. Do we have any issues? That is the hard part of the question, I would say. OK. Expand it. 6n plus n squared. So the product, I'm just going to rewrite it in descending order. n squared plus 6n. OK. Now what? I'm asking a question about the minimum. We now kind of have an equation that looks like standard form. Some of you may or may not have seen this question if you got to the word problem yet. It's number two, where there's no C value, which could throw a wrench in things, but it doesn't, it doesn't, right? It's just all we're gonna do is complete the square, right? Are you looking for the two numbers? I'm looking for the looking No. For the two numbers or are you looking for the vertex? I'm looking for what the minimum value is. What's interesting is it's gonna spit out you can find both of those pieces of information. 
like do quadratic formula or the standard form, that's just supposed to give you an it would, yeah, it would give you an n value that you could plug back into one of the equations to find m. I'm interested in two things here, though. I suppose, yeah. Like You're right. Like right. The, what are they asking for? What do they want you to solve? I think they want what the actual minimum value is and the numbers that make that true. Does that make sense? If you use quadratic equation, it's just going to give you the two numbers, which I guess in theory you could multiply together to give you what the value is. But completing the square is going to give you the vertex. Okay. I think wouldn't the completing the square work better? Because if you were to do quadratic formula, you get the two x-intercepts, then you have to find the actual percentage, and then you would find the vertex. There's just more steps that aren't going to happen. Yeah, that's why it exists, right? So if I complete the square on this thing, We'll, we'll make sense of the vertex after, but remember, that's what we're after, is the vertex. Okay, so we're gonna switch this into vertex form. Right, so we're gonna go from the top down to the bottom, number one to number three on the sideboard. That's what we're doing right now, okay? Completing the square, so let's complete the square on it. Is the, is the number in front of n squared one? Okay, we're good to go. Okay, so find z. Z is six divided by two squared, which is three squared, which is 9. So then I write my product is n squared plus 6n plus 9 minus 9. First 3 turn into n plus 3 squared minus 9. Okay, so then my vertex is negative 3, negative 9, okay? Here's, here's, okay, one of the numbers, n, right? This whole equation is based on n, right? So when I solve this, this is n. n, is, n equals negative 3. That's one of your numbers. The second part of this, oops, I want the highlighter. The second part of this is a minimum value of negative 9 when they're multiplied together. Okay? Retta. So if n is negative 3, you would just plug that in to find n? Yeah. And that's those are two numbers? That's those are two numbers. This is a relatively easy question. So a little bit, it bends your head a little bit, the wording of the question and whatnot. But the process is, the process is, rel is straightforward. It's the interpretation of the question that gets a little bit sticky. Okay, so I know if I go back to the equation m equals 6 plus n, and I plug n in, I can get m. So m is equal to 6 plus negative 3, which is equal to... 3. Okay? So therefore, the two numbers that multiply together to give a minimum under this circumstance, whose difference is 6, are 3 and negative 3. Okay? That's just an entry level question, okay? It's kind of a made up one. Yep. So, that's where the beginning equation where it's like t equals m times n. Yep. The m and that is the minimum, right? No, the m, m, m and n are the two numbers. Oh, okay. Okay, and then p is the product after I multiplied them together. Is that okay? Next question's a bit better. Okay, so here we go. Mr. Mackay is building a pen for his dogs in his backyard. Okay, he has 600 feet of building materials. What would be the dimensions of the pen such that they maximize the area? 
Okay, when you guys go to like, it doesn't make sense to make a pen that looks like this. Right? Because if I, if I make it one, let's say one foot by five, 90, no, it'd be half that. Anyway, do you get what I'm saying? Half of uh, 596 or something. Because you're going to have 600 on this side too. It's got to be half. I forgot that 600 was the area. Yeah, yeah, no, sorry. It's it's the, the fencing. I went and bought 600 feet of fencing. So the distance around the outside is 600 feet. That's all I've got available. So it doesn't make sense to like do one foot wide because it's one times the number, right? As I start to increase, anyway, you'll see. Does that make sense? I've only got 600 feet of material to play with, right? But I wanna maximize the area that my dogs have to run around in. This doesn't look very big to me, okay? So we're gonna find out what the dimension should be such that they maximize the area, okay? So we've got two equations available to us, right? Perimeter equals 2L plus 2W, right? And the area, which is ultimately what I'm after, because I see the word maximize. Area is length times width. Okay, those are your two starting points. How many feet of building materials do I have? And what did I say that was? That was the perimeter. Like that's the perimeter I have available to me to make this pen, right? So I'm gonna say 600 is equal to 2L plus 2W because that's the perimeter, right? And then you're gonna solve for either L or W. So it's gonna be 600 minus 2w is equal to 2l. And then I could divide both sides by 2. And I should get 300 minus w is equal to l. OK? I now have a second equation at my disposal. I know I now have one of the variables isolated. Justice, yeah? Oh, thank you. What do you mean? That would interrupt the video. You couldn't have let me know at like, I don't know, 5%? Kind of close there, Justice. The rest of you sat by bystanders. Okay, I'm gonna ruin this whole question. Okay, and we might have lost the first bit lesson too. If I didn't plug it in, I would have died and we might have lost the first lesson from this morning. Area equals, I'm gonna plug out in 300. minus w times w then expand a equals 300 w minus w squared what's the issue with this question right up okay so i gotta factor that out right i gotta factor the negative out because the w squared is not by itself up front. So let's do that. a equals negative w squared minus 300 w. OK? Complete the square. What's the z value? Negative 300 divided by 2 squared 
15 squared was that? Uh, 2,500. 2,500? 2,500. Okay. That's fine. I don't care how big the number is. The process doesn't change. Okay, first three terms turn into a perfect square trinomial. Again, this is why I'm showing you guys the trick of what the number should be because you don't want to sit here and try and figure out two numbers that multiply to 22,500 and add to negative 300. Like, you'd be there all day for something that just turns into W minus 150 squared. Right? Then you just multiply, don't forget your equal signs. Multiply the negatives in. Okay? What's the vertex? Okay, what's that mean? Sorry, I'm horrible. At, like, I can't fix my issues with leaving you guys space because I've already printed all the lessons, but that's kind of my bad. I didn't leave enough. Okay. What's it mean? This is obviously W and area, right? Those, that, those are the two things. If I was plotting this on a, on a graph, area would be up here and width would be here. Right, so my 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 uh, parabola would be up here somewhere at uh, or the vertex, sorry, of my parabola would be 150. You guys can write this down or not; it doesn't matter. I'm just trying to illustrate to you what's going on here. Okay, there's my and then the parabola looks something like this, right? It's at a maximum. It makes sense that it looks like that because I've got a negative out front. See all this stuff starting to tie together? Okay. Makes sense is it's opening down. Now, you have what the maximum area is, but it was asking what the dimensions were. Okay, so if I, if I um, were to draw this thing, I have 600 meters available, or 600 feet, right? What are the dimensions? Without actually plugging it into the equation, if we thought about this, Here's my pen, 150, 150, 150, 150, right? It means that when the length equals 150 and the width equals 150, I maximize the area. So what's the general rule you can come up with? squares maximize area relative to their rectangle counterparts. A rectangle is not the maximization of an area. A square is. Isn't the rectangle like the opposite of the maximize the perimeter? I don't know. Yeah, I think it is. Perimeter is perimeter though, isn't it? The longer it is and the skinnier it is, the more perimeter you have. I'm going to have to think about this one. Well, then that's what we learned in science. Like, I don't know. Like the, the huge volume is higher, but like the skinny, like snake rectangle is part of the higher surface area. It's just the same thing for the cubes. Oh. Okay. I'll look into that and make sense of that. Okay. Is anybody completely lost with just what just happened? It's coming up with the equation and then completing the square. Big picture. Okay, we're just going to keep doing questions to practice coming up with equations and then completing the square to answer a problem. 
about maximization. Optimization. These are what we call optimization questions. Yeah. What is, so, what is the other number? Like, there's 150 and then... 150. They're both the same. No, but I mean up there, like the vertex. Oh, the vertex is the area. So it's the width that... It's a width of 150 that maximizes the area of 22,500 square feet. Oh, so that's, that's the area. The y portion of the vertex is the area. That's a good question. Okay. The other dimension would be 150. Because 150, well, okay, let me ask you a question. Somebody test this. What is 150 times 150? Can somebody answer that question for me? Just somebody type it in, see what happens. Without saying it out loud. Ruining surprises. So you know how it's all about the connections. It's all over the place. You know what I mean? Finding all though. Okay. I'm gonna kick that question up one notch so it's not it's not so boring like a square. Okay, I'm gonna kick it up one notch. Oh, but I have to. It's more interesting. Okay. So that's I don't know. That's the extent. That's your introduction to word problems, I suppose. So what I've done in two stages, where I give you the equation, you complete the square and answer the question. But then I can give you a bunch of information where you have to come up with the equation and then complete the square to answer the question. Okay. That's the intro.